the things that we do, are they worthy things? Are they things that are right? Are they things that are true? Are they things that are, are, things that are just? Are they things, are they things, things that, are that are faultless? faultless? The text says that wisdom is trying really, really hard to teach us these good things. In this room, another question real quick. How many of you, is there anybody in here that has studied communication theory? Anybody studying communication? We got some people studying communication. In, in communication theory, you know that every message, and I'm going to give this my best effort because I'm not a communication major, but I think, I think I'll get this right. Uh, in communication theory, everyone knows that, that every message has two sides. There is the intended message that was sent out by the person that sent it out. And then there was the message that was actually received. Communication theory teaches us that these two things don't always match up. People don't always hear what we want them to hear. That, that, that's why we have miscommunication. That's why uh, people get hurt, you know, because, because what we say or what we intend to say is not always what is heard. You know, just think about it, you know. Let's just be honest. Every pastor knows that in any given sermon, at any given moment, there may be people who are tracking perfectly with you with the intended message, and there may be some who are sound asleep. I've seen it a million times. We've all seen it. I once preached a message about the call of wisdom that I titled after a beautiful Christmas song that we're going to come back to in the end. The title of that song asks a really important question. Wisdom is calling out from the most strategic places that it would call. The song that I used, the title of my message was this. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? That is many ways we're going to see what Solomon is asking. Wisdom is calling out. She's calling out to us. She has good things to teach us. The question is, are we listening? Point number five, the priority of the call. Man, the truth is we are busy people. What kind of priority should we give to this call of of wisdom? Meaning, where should listening to her call rank on the list of the things that, that we need to be about? Sometimes you need to just, as I said, let the text speak for itself. Listen to verses 10 and 11. Listen to what wisdom says to us as we think about the priority of gaining wisdom. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge more than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies. And nothing you desire can compare with her. We run, as Jesus says, after these things that are here one day and gone tomorrow. And Solomon says, choose these things. Seek, pursue wisdom more than you do all of these other things. Point number six, the companion of wisdom. I like this part, y'all. I really like this part. The, the, the writer Solomon here is getting very practical. Look at verse 12 as we think about the companion of wisdom he says I wisdom dwell together with prudence I possess knowledge and discretion are you picking up on what Solomon is saying here at this point he is making a very 
technical and important point. Notice how he groups the words together. He says, I wisdom. And wisdom kind of is this stuff that we have in our head. It's this stuff that we hear. We've, we've gained this. But he says, I wisdom dwell together with prudence. He says, I possess knowledge and discretion. The, the Solomon here is making this really strong point that, that if we listen and we hear that wisdom is not just about what we know up here. Wisdom is, might be what we know, but prudent. Prudent is how we act. Knowledge is what we have in our head, but discretion is how we choose to use it. And he's saying, look, get this stuff because I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess both knowledge and discretion. Wisdom and knowledge in our heads and our hearts <coughs> leads to prudence and discretion in our hands and feet and mouths. Explain the other way around. Wise people do wise things and foolish people do foolish things. That's what he's saying. Wise people do wise things and foolish people do foolish things. Or as Forrest Gump's mama once said, stupid is as stupid is as stupid does. Guess what the opposite of that Solomon's saying here? Wisdom is as wisdom does. That's his point here. Number seven, the unchanging nature of wisdom. I didn't type this one out because it's a lot of verses. So you just listen as I read. This is verses 21 through 31 in your text. And this part is really philosophically interesting to me. I like this part. Verses 21 through 31, wisdom is speaking. And listen to what wisdom says. Um... The, the, the Lord has brought, I'm, I'm beginning at verse 22. The Lord has brought me forth as the first of his works before his deeds of old. I, wisdom says, was appointed from eternity, from the beginning. Before the world began, wisdom was there. When there were no oceans, I was given birth. <clears throat> when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills I was given birth, before he made the earth or its field or any of the dust of the world, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds and fixed, the, and fixed them securely in the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundary so that the waters would not overstep his command. And when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was the craftsman at his side. Wisdom was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Y'all, this is such an interesting point for me, the unchanging nature of wisdom. Can anybody in one word tell me about, or, or maybe in one word tell me the, the second law of thermodynamics? Somebody in this room can. Anybody? Who? You said it. Say it loud. Entropy. What does entropy mean, Chuck? Everything is winding down. I got a slide for y'all here. Anybody remember this picture right here? Anybody seen the movie Inception? Inception is about this guy that's, he's dreaming. And he never knows really if he's in a dream. So he has this little totem, a top. Because his dreams are so real that he cannot tell if he's in a dream. And like, man, we don't know if we're in a dream 
ourselves when we're in a dream. So what he does is he takes his little top and he spins it. And if he's not dreaming, guess what happens? It winds down. It, it eventually runs out of energy and it winds down. You might be saying, what on earth is his point? What is he getting to? Well, God in the act of creation infused the universe with energy. He wound it up and according to the laws of nature that he himself established when he did, it is now winding down. All of it. This body right here. I'm on the clock. Why well, tell you this? Because it's true for everything in this world, as the text says, except for wisdom. Y'all, this is really, really important stuff right here that I'm coming to, especially as we think about our world. The text says that this word that that, that this word preceded, wisdom preceded the creation and is really not part of the created order which necessarily means that wisdom is tied to the very nature of God which means, now listen to this part, it's very important, it means it is eternal and unchanging. He, he, these words that wisdom speak, he says that they're, wisdom says that they're worthy, right, true, just, and faultless and they were here before anything else was made. They are part and parcel to the very character of God, the very nature of God. Well, what does that mean for us practically? The truth of this message, the truth of the call of wisdom is eternal and unchanging. That means it is not true for one age. I mean, that means it's not true for one age, but then not for another that means it's not true for one culture, but then not for another. It means it is not true for one generation, but then not for another. It is true, period, for all people of all cultures in all epochs of history. Every, on every corner of the globe, the call of wisdom is eternal and unchanging and reflects the character of God. The call of wisdom was true 10,000 years ago. These words that wisdom is calling out, they were true 10,000 years ago, and they'll be true 10,000 years from now if we are here. What does that mean? It means that truth is not like Baskin Robbins. We don't get to choose our own flavor of truth. Truth is tied to the nature of God and is therefore unchanging. Every generation and every culture does not get to choose its own preferred flavor of truth. What wisdom is saying was true a thousand years ago and it will be true a thousand years from now. <coughs> Y'all are going to like this eighth point. You know why? Because it's called the end. The end. Listen to how he closes the psalm. Listen to how many times he uses the word listen. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. I once had this teacher, and I, I, I've, I've told this story before. I don't know if you've heard it. I was, I was in elementary school. I didn't really know how much at that time kind of words would, would come to mean to me. A person who, who lives his life thinking about words. And I don't do math, so I need to do words, Okay. But this 
lady, she came and she spoke to our class. And she spoke about the power of words and how important words are. And I remember being mesmerized kind of by this lady. And then she told us her favorite word. And I've never forgotten this all of my life. I don't know why it had such an impact on me, but it did. But, but as a very small child, she said, and my favorite word is listen. Listen. I can't say it like she did. Because when she said it, it, it rang like a crystal bell off of her tongue. And she even talked about that. Listen. It just rings. It's just beautiful. Solomon is saying, listen. Three times in these verses, he says, listen. 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 In these words, there is Life, there is favor for who finds them and who rejects them, harms himself and loves death. I told y'all before that I once preached a message something like this and I entitled it, Do You Hear What I Hear? What a beautiful, beautiful Christmas song that is I was supposed to take a picture and read some of the lyrics to you but I forgot I won't forget for the next service but you don't have to come the song is kind of cool because it says that this word is ringing out as big as the oceans almost like what the proverb says it's ringing out as big as the ocean. Do you hear what I hear? Way up in the sky, little lamb, right? Do you hear what I hear? Listen. Listen. The invitation this morning is to just Take some moments and meditate and listen. I've asked Terrell to play something for me while we meditate. I'm going to be up here at the front. If you want to come and have prayer, if you are interested in joining our church, find me right here. You might have to tap on my shoulders because I'm going to be listening and meditating with you. And then after Terrell does this, I'll, I'll close this. Let's pray. Let's meditate. Let's listen. Do you hear what I hear?
Father, we are thankful this morning that, that your wisdom is not something that's hidden, that you intend to keep from us. But God, if we were to open the book of Proverbs and read the Proverbs on either side of Proverbs 8, we would read that, that folly is calling out as well, looking for the simple-minded that it might lead them astray. God, I pray that we might hear the words of wisdom, that we might understand in these words there is not only wisdom, but that wisdom dwells together with prudence, that in wisdom there is both knowledge and discretion. God, as we go, because we are made in your image as moral creatures, may we hear your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask our volunteers who are taking the offering to come on forward. Uh, and we're going to just say a prayer to bless that. So guys, y'all come on. Uh, and I'm going to pray for us uh, as we take this offering and give you some announcements as we wrap up. Father, we thank you for today. And Lord, we thank you for just your word and how it speaks to us. And Lord, we pray that even as we go out, that Lord, we wouldn't let the busyness of our lives keep us from listening to you, hearing the wisdom that you desire to pour into our hearts. And so God, this morning, even as we come, uh, Lord, we come to say that we are yours. God, every part of who we are is yours, including the smallest parts, like our wallets. And so, Lord, we pray that you would take what's given today, God, that you would multiply it to use it in this world and in this community. And, Lord, may we be good stewards of everything that you put into our hands. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As they take this offering, I want to give you just a few announcements. Next Sunday... On August 11th, our women's ministry is doing Bless Our School Sunday, uh, and that will happen right after the 11 o'clock service. And so if you want to plug into our women's ministry and just hear how you can be a blessing and spend time praying for our local schools, and this will be a great event for you to be a part of. It'll be immediately after the 11 o'clock service next week. Also, uh, starting next week and on August 18th, we are doing our next sessions of starting points. So if you've been coming, but you're ready to say, hey, I think, I think Bridgeway is where I belong as far as my church family, then we want you to sign up and to come join us during the life group time at 945 on August 11th and August 18th. We're going to talk about who we are, what we believe, how we operate, all of those things as well as, hey, what, what is membership and what do we expect when you get to that level? And so we want to invite you to come and be a part of Starting Point next week and August 18th. Also, uh, we are starting next Sunday night our high school gatherings on Sunday nights. And so if you've got a high schooler, next Sunday night from 5.30 to 7.30, they will meet upstairs. They'll start with dinner, uh, and then they'll be done by 7.30 each Sunday night, and that'll be a weekly thing. And then finally, our midweek starts back August 14th. So two important things that you need to know about that. One, in the month of August, we'll all be together in the Fellowship Hall. We're actually going to be doing a deeper dive in to this series that we're walking through in Proverbs. And so every Wednesday night, we'll gather together and we'll do some additional teaching and some really deep discussion around tables about what we just preached on Sunday. And so that'll start on August 14th uh, in the midst of that. But also, if you are used to coming on Wednesday nights, there's one very important thing that you need to hear, which is this. We have to clear the entire system, which means that if you had a standing reservation from like 1982, all right, it does not exist as of today, all right? We've got to sign everybody back up from normal so that we can actually get an accurate count uh, for Glenn, who does an amazing job cooking for us. And so we are sending out a link that you can do that, or you can call the church office, and Peggy will walk you through that. But we hope you'll join us August 14th for midweek. Church family, we love you. We're so glad to see you here this morning. As you exit out, take two minutes Find someone that you haven't talked to yet this morning or maybe even someone you don't know and just get their name, tell them you're glad they're here at Bridgeway and we'll see you next week.